Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Marcus Alexander. He works as a scientist in the Human Nature Lab at the Yale Institute for Network Science. His research focuses on genomics of social networks, the evolution of human cooperation, and large scale field interventions that improve and extend human life. Today we'll talk with Dr. Alexander about the Biome Biology and Social Networks in the Developing World Project. Welcome Dr. Alexander. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Let's start with an overview of the project you're working on. Tell us about it. Well, for the past two years or so, the Human Nature Lab has been running a large public health intervention in Honduras. Mm -hmm. uh, we are running a network targeting trial to improve infant and maternal health. And uh, as a part of that, uh, this project, which is led by Professor Nicholas Christakis, um, has consisted of mapping face-to-face -face social networks in a large sample of about 30,000 people mm -hmm. across 176 villages. Wow. And uh, our goal in that project is to deliver uh, health education so to improve health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Now, the microbiome project really started when I moved here from Stanford, where I did my postdoc mostly in genomics. I brought to this project my interest in biology, my interest in genomics, and uh, Professor Christakis had a large social network uh, mapped with a, bunch, with a lot of information on it and mm -hmm. opportunities to study how health spreads through a human network. Okay. Uh, so this project, which uh, I can't take all credit for, I have to say that it's really a brainchild of uh, Nicholas Krasakis, mm -hmm. um, uh, started by trying to understand what is the distribution of bacteria that colonize human bodies mm -hmm. across a network of social interactions. Okay, let's, let's talk about some terms you use. Social networks, what do you mean by that? And also genomics, can you define that term as well for us? Sure, so uh, we take social networks to be actual real social interactions. So I'm not mm -hmm. talking about Facebook. Okay. We're talking here about villages in a remote part of the world. Uh, people live there on, uh, at most one or two dollars a day. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very isolated. And uh, uh, what we've done is we went into the field and we, used, we developed an app called Trellis, uh, which is a net, uh, map for photographic uh, mapping of social networks. Mm -hmm. So we went into these villages, and when I say we, I mean there's a team of about 100 people okay. working uh, in the field. And uh, we map social networks by first taking pictures of everybody. So there's a huge, uh, basically, Facebook, so to speak, mm -hmm. of this part of the world. And then we went to people and asked them what we call name generator question. Mm -hmm. So I may ask you, for example, uh, who do you go to to discuss important matters with? Okay. And you will give me a number of uh, names. I will, I will type in the names and will, you will point to the picture of the person. Okay. So with a n number of these name generators, we were able to uh, construct what is now the largest map social network ever done um, by any research group. Okay. Uh, so that's what we mean by social network. Okay. Um, what we mean by the genomic, uh, you ask, well, genome is basically the bag of genes that each of us carries with us that give us instructions on uh, our body instructions on how to function. Okay. So when we say human genome, we really mean studying uh, the genetic code of the entire population. Okay, and why Honduras? Well, Honduras, as I said, is a very uh, remote and uh, poor area of the world. Uh, one of the uh, goals of the Human Nature Lab at Yale has been not only to understand how humans interact, but also to use the knowledge that we uh, uncover to design better health interventions that can actually change people's lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, the core project in Honduras is really trying to make the delivery of health education to women uh, who may be pregnant or may become pregnant in a very efficient way by targeting key people in the social network mm -hmm. and therefore helping the intervention spread uh, exponentially through the entire region. Okay, and how long has this study been going on? Did so the say? microbiome project is, uh, so that's a very kind of exciting new work. Mm -hmm. This whole study uh, has been funded by the Mil Bill, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation yes. and by the International Development Bank. The new study funded by the Nomis Foundation uh, consists of uh, setting up an entire uh, set of procedures to collect uh, biological specimens from these subjects. Okay. So this project has started about a year ago and what we've done, we've set up a cold chain uh, of procedures and equipment that is required to pick up a sample, 
uh, for example, a stool sample in a, a remote village in Honduras, mm -hmm. freeze it uh, in liquid nitrogen, transport it to our local office, then prepare it for shipping, bring it to the Yale lab, and at Yale lab, we share it with our collaborators. Mm -hmm. uh, Ilana Brito is a microbiologist at Cornell. She's one of our main collaborators. So w we then share this uh, uh, biological samples and analyze the DNA that's contained in it. Okay, and what are you hoping to find? Well, uh, we have some hints already uh, that the microbiome in the developing world is very different than the microbiome in, uh, that we carry here. And uh, why is that? Uh, for example, uh, we are exposed uh, to different uh, pathogens, but more importantly, we have different hygiene uh, practices. We are okay. exposed to new antibiotics. So there's some uh, hints that the microbiome of this developing area uh, will be much more diverse. Mm -hmm. They will have many more genes that are specialized to do different things uh, uh, adopted to the people who live there. Mm -hmm. For example, diet is one of them. And uh, one exciting part about that is that as our, our societies develop and become more industrialized, a lot of bi biological diversity that exists in this uh, bacterial population may be lost. Mm -hmm. So a number of genes, a number of species may disappear from the face of Earth. Doing studies like this in the developing world enable us to get a better glimpse at the full genetic diversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, needless to say, if we understand the bacteria that people carry, we will understand more about the diseases that they are exposed to and how these diseases may spread from person to person. Let's talk a little bit more about that in terms of um, some of the things um, that were talked about in the study in terms of obesity, for instance, and um, diabetes, yeah. things that typically you cannot catch from another person. But what you're saying is through these things in our bodies that that is possible. Well, Just expound on that a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a quite a controversial uh, statement. It was, but yes, it is. It was, but it was Nicholas's work, the work of the Human Nature Lab, maybe now 10 years ago, that uh, first established uh, in a network of people in Framingham, in the city of Framingham, mm -hmm. that uh, obesity clusters in a social network that if my friend's friend gains a few pounds, I become more likely to gain a few pounds. Mm -hmm. So, so far, what we've, think, what we've thought of is this process being a social process. We affect how each of us behaves. We affect each other's norms. Mm -hmm. But what our microbiome study asks is whether there could be also a biological uh, uh, mechanism behind it. Right, and what, that's fascinating. Exactly. Uh, one of the big discoveries that was made at MIT in Eric Alms lab, and uh, Ilana Brito has, Professor Brito has worked on this, is this concept of mobile genes. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that human body has about uh, uh, 20,000 protein coding genes. Bacteria have million, millions. And uh, not only that, but their genes can uh, jump from a strain to strain. So there are these little mobile genes that can actually move quite fast through the bacterial population. Mm -hmm. They may be antibiotic resistance genes, but they also could be genes that increase risk of diabetes for some people, or risk of autism, mm -hmm. or risk of obesity and other metabolic disorders. So this is really an uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. We really feel a little bit like explorers going right. into an unknown land, so to speak, of microbiome and trying to map uh, these new uh, bacterial strains and their genes. So what would have to happen in order for some research to actually indicate that one can um, get diabetes from another person? Uh, I think we're definitely not there yet. Okay. Um, but uh, the first step, I would say, is to understand what species and what genes exist in this population. Okay. Uh, to give you uh, a very kind of uh, example uh, uh, connected to diabetes, carbohydrates are very important in how we process them. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that in different parts of the world, people get their carbohydrates from very different sources. Right. So uh, tortilla chips uh, may be the main source of carbohydrates in Honduras area in Honduras. Wheat and bread may be here. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that bacteria have evolved the genes and have populated our gut, uh, our, our human gut, in a way to adapt to processing those particular carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So anything that may go wrong in that uh, symbiotic relationship between the bacteria and how our body works has the potential to affect the risk of diabetes and other diseases. Right, right. So ultimately, um, how long will this 
new study go on for? Uh, we're hoping that this will be a multi-year study. Um, uh, one of the things that we also hope to do is remap all the social networks um, again and see how they change mm -hmm. and whether a change in social relationship is reflected in a change in the type of bacteria or genes that we carry in mm -hmm. our gut. Okay, and um, you know, why is it so important that this is studied? Uh, so I mentioned the idea of biodiversity. Um, we really understand very little about the role bacteria play in health. Mm -hmm. uh, recent evidence you mentioned on the diabetes, uh, but there is also recent evidence that a number of uh, mental health disorders, for example, depression, ADHD, right. autism, anxiety, may be linked uh, to the way our gut interacts with the microbiome. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I said, it's a very unexplored area. Right. Uh, when we, go, when we take this to the setting of the developing world, there's an added uh, imperative to actually do something and help people in the region. Mm -hmm. So one of the great uh, uh, pleasures of working the Human Nature Lab has been uh, our ability to directly affect the lives uh, of the people in the field. So for example, the way we collect these specimens is we have planned to have uh, little uh, village clinics mm -hmm. set up. Uh, in these remote villages where villagers can come and can get screened for, uh, in, through a basic physical and mm -hmm. give their samples. Uh, we give them back uh, results of some of their studies and we uh, provide uh, free deworming med medication, for example, for those affected. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that there's, a symbio there's this partnership that we can have uh, between uh, subjects that contribute to our knowledge of basic science and on our, our part, us contributing uh, to their everyday health. Sure. All right, well, this is fascinating, and um, I'm sure it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of this study. So thank you very much for being here with us today and sharing some of your work. Thank you very much. For more information about Dr. Alexander and his research, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.